My name is Ferdy Vandenberg. I am 39 years old, and I am a superhero. Uh, that's awkward. I really am a superhero. Well, at least in the eyes of my children. They think I'm awesome, that I always come up with something fun to do. Actually, my wife, she also thinks I'm a superhero, but for complete different reasons, I cannot share with you tonight. <laughs> As a dad, I find myself on a journey. What does it mean to be an awesome dad? Nine years ago, my life totally changed. It was early in the morning when I took the J train from Manhattan, New York, to Gates Avenue, a subway station on the border of Bushwick and Bed-Stuy, two of the toughest and greatest neighborhoods of Brooklyn, and also my home of the past seven years. But this morning, as I was walking down the stairs of that subway station, fear suddenly grabbed my heart, as I realized the kind of neighborhood I was actually living in. I thought of the drug dealers that were ruling the street here, the police sirens I would hear literally every single night. And I thought to myself, would a responsible father bring his child to a neighborhood like this? You see, the night before, my wife had given birth to our daughter, Mael. But right now, they were in the safety of St. Vincent's Hospital. And here I was, walking to my apartment, and all these thoughts came to me. I thought of the kids I had been working with for the past seven years. Do or die in bed style. That was the slogan, their life lesson of the neighborhood they lived in. I worked with beautiful little girls, but as soon as they were on the street, they were tough and rough. They had to be. The boys that I worked with were funny. They were swag before that was even a word. <laughs> but when you spend time with them, you realize, man, you have no father figures in your life. I worked for an organization called Metro World Child, and we brought after-school programs to the toughest neighborhoods of New York City. How to stay in school, how to honor your parents, how to stay away from drugs. And this program had started by Bill Wilson, my director, who had moved here in 1980. Back then the neighborhood was even much worse. But he knew these children need to hear a different kind of message. And I guess it was successful because by the time I came on staff in 2000, we were reaching 20,000 children every single week. And when you reach that many children, people from all around the world will come and find you and they ask you, how do you guys become so successful? I say, as the bootcamp director, we did training programs and I had a chance to tell them, actually, our secret is quite simple. Our staff and volunteers go out on the street every single day, finding children where they are and simply start by playing with them. Because when you play with a child, you start building trust. And when you build trust, you build relationships. Children don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. The language of a child is play. We measure everything in hard work and money, but children measure everything in fun and play. Play is essential in the development of a child. Through it, it develops its social-emotional skills, its problem-solving skills. Studies show that children with traumatic experience actually help process those thoughts through play. The United Nations have declared that play is the right of every child in this world today. Professor Donaldson says it well. He says, children learn as they play. But most importantly, as a child plays, he learns how to learn. Hmm. Play is not just fun, it's essential for a healthy child development. When I was working in New York, I had a chance to start another program in Uganda, Africa, with my Ugandan friend Bosco Mukibi. And this friend of mine and I started an orphan support program called One More Child. And with One More Child, we looked for orphan children that could still live with an extended family, maybe an uncle or an aunt. Or, and in that way, we knew that they, their shelter was taken care of, we controlled that their food was taken care of, that they had medical, meds, uh, yeah, medical needs met, and we then paid their school fees. Well, most of you will agree those are very important elements for survival for anybody on this planet. So when Tatiana and I were finished, my wife Tatiana and I were finished in New York, we took our daughter Mael and we moved to Uganda, Africa for about six months, thinking we were going to improve one more child. But we discovered a problem that is just as big in development countries. 
You see, my daughter, she was 40 months old by now, and I loved spending quality time with her. But I also wanted to take her places. But I couldn't find any places. And if I would ask local friends, they just looked at me puzzled. We don't take our kids' places. So I ended up taking her to the orphanage. Well, the orphanage to play with her. Because in this orphanage, every time the children would come and they had great toys outside in the garden. But one thing I started noticing, every time the children play of the orphanage, all the children of the community would come, stand by the fence, pressing their faces against the fence, wanting to go in. And I thought, man, this is an upside down picture. This doesn't make sense. Children that don't have to live in an orphanage want to go there because they see something they really want. You see, we live right now with a little bit more than 7 billion people on this planet. One billion children live in poverty. One billion children on this planet. One billion children that are on the verge of being deprived of their childhood, of something in their childhood that is so important, and that's play. When Tatjana and I moved back to the Netherlands, we decided to start an, a non-profit called Checo. And Checo is Swahili for laughter and hilarity. And that's exactly what we try to bring with Checo. But wait, some of you, some of you might have come to Africa before and you say, ah, wait, this story doesn't make sense. I see lots of children and I see lots of children play in Africa. And you're probably right. Up to about six years old. And then they have two more responsibilities. Help the family survive by doing domestic work and make sure you do good in school so you can finish and get out. So there is a problem in the development world. So we thought, Checo, maybe we can do something about this problem. With Checo, we try to bring laughter and hilarity back into the development world. And we do that with a fun fair, a place where children and communities can actually see what is the power of play. And we don't want to stop in Uganda. We believe that every child should have a childhood. Well, I am not the father of one billion children, but I am the father of three. Because after Ma'el, we got two boys, Emmet and Zedek. And as a dad, I am still on that journey. What does it mean to be an awesome dad? But in order to answer that question, you would first have to answer the question, what is the role of a dad anyway? Because, you know, in the last couple of decennials, that role has really changed. Up to the 50s, this was easy. The man was the authoritative figure, and women were taking care of the household and the children. But all that changed during the countercultural revolutions of the 60s. The baby boomers pulled down every institution we knew, including the one of family tra traditional families, leaving us sort of figuring out again what is everybody's role now. By the end of the 60s, the feminist movement had come in and told women, listen, you should have the same rights just like men. But well, the introduction of household equipment and, 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 and washing machines and all those things allowed women to free up also lots of their time. So they did have more time and they were able to go on the, in the work field and actually start raising support for the family, something that was first only done by the men. The sexual liberation added to that, that now you were able as a woman to start a family. You didn't necessarily have to get married. Uh, the birth control measures allowed women to plan their careers better. So women were well on their way in this new sort of role. But for the men, it was definitely more difficult. Men were still searching, okay, if women are helping raise the children, then I guess men are supposed to help, or if women are helping to raise the family budget, then I guess dads are supposed to help raising the children. Now, I'm a Generation X child. We are the first children of the baby boomers. And I'm the generation where my friends were sent home with a key around their neck. Just go home, go watch television after school and wait until mom and dad come home. And if dad came home in particular, instead of spending quality playtime with us, mom would say, ah, oh, no, no, leave dad, he's probably tired, he probably doesn't have so much on his head, you know. And for us, as a generation X, we said, okay, we love our dads. We really do. But somehow we want to have a different attitude towards raising our children. And the current generation, Generation Z, they need a different attitude. Because this is the generation, they have a complete different challenge than ever before. And the challenge is right here. 
screens. These screens are following our children anywhere. In their classrooms, in your house, and you go on a journey. It's even shown that these days, this seems to become <laughs> more and more reality. It's funny, but Generation Z is able to connect more than any other generation before. They can get all their answers questions instantly. They can connect to anyone in the world in a moment. But yet, more and more children find it difficult to connect simply to the people sitting right there with them in the room. And I believe, as a generation of fathers, we have an awesome opportunity to change that. Today, I want to give you five benefits of spending quality playtime with your children, what it does for you and what it does for your children. Benefit number one of spending quality playtime with your children is that it builds stronger self-esteem in your child. That's, it doesn't matter what you play with your dad as long as you play. Studies show that when fathers are involved in playing with their children, this results in more trust, more bravery, better connections between their, with their social peers. All great things that actually mean they have, the children have better self-esteem. You see, we dads, we are particularly good in challenging our kids. So we should go out there and challenge our kids more. But if I let my child play Play-Doh the whole time, and I never, if I let him watch Play-Doh the whole time on YouTube, and I never take that away and simply go do it, how am I building his self-esteem? The second benefit of spending quality playtime with your kids is that you empower them. Up to the industrial age, this was normal. Parents would spend hours with their kids to train them how to take over the family business. But these days, it's different. We don't have, our offices are often off limits to kids. But play is great because it allows us to really empower them. There's no rules. You cannot do it wrong. The child really learns to actually learn life by falling, laughing at himself, and get back up again. The third benefit of spending quality playtime with your children is that it builds trust. If you want to build trust in a, if you want to build trust in another person, you're going to have to connect to what he values. And a child values kindness, authority, play and fun. Spending quality playtime with your children allows you to build a bridge to him. Spending quality playtime also creates intimacy, into me see. You actually start realizing what your child really likes what he's good at, what makes him laugh, what makes him cry. These are great benefits of spending quality playtime with your kids. And the last one is that it creates reachability. You teach your child really what it means to be reachable. Because yes, in one hand it means that the whole world can connect with us every moment, but in the other man moment it also means that we can shut off the whole world and simply be with our kids in the room. And dads, when we do that, especially during playtime, we show our kids how that's done. If you don't answer your phone, when you simply play with your kids, you're teaching them valuable things. A while back, I had a chance to... Uh, I sent an email to all my friends, asking them, guys, what do you guys do for quality playtime with your kids? So I sent them out throughout the neighborhood, and all the ideas that I was getting back, I was distributing again to my friends, so they would be inspired, what are great things I can do with my kids? So with a couple of guys, we decided, man, this should be an app. I know it's on a screen, but I'm going to explain. It's easy. <laughs> you put your ideas in this app. You say how yeah, what you've done. But then when you need an idea, because it's Friday afternoon and you're home from work early, you have two hours and 10 bucks, you put it in the app. And within 45 seconds, the app gives you a great idea what you can do, making you that awesome dad that your kids think you are. I believe that if we spend quality playtime with our kids, we really become the superheroes our kids think we are. At that it, we have a manifesto, and that's the last thing I want to leave you with. All right. Today is a new day. Today is your day. Make today count. Make the best of the moments you have with your children. Before you know it, pew, they'll be grown. Embrace tomorrow with no regrets by giving everything you have today. Love your kids more. Spend quality time with them every day. 
Share your wisdom. Be funny. <laughs> Laugh more than you yell. <laughs> Ooh. Give them direction more than you give them correction. Gaze at them. Wrestle and giggle and tickle often. Aspire to be the hero they think you are. High five. Grin from ear to ear. Make funny faces. Crack jokes. Graciously apologize. And verbalize when you are proud. Don't compromise with your enemies. Oh, no time. <laughs> I'm tired. I'm busy. To miss spending precious moments with your children. And shush the voice of culpability. You are not doing as bad as you think you are. Don't be scared. Be involved. Be strong. Time is ticking. Tick, 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 tick. And it will soon run out. Don't waste it. Be present. Be involved. Enjoy tea parties. Oh, and build Lego castles. Oh, and snuggle with your midnight bed intruder. Use your superpowers. Kiss boo-boos away. Oh, hug when heartache. Inspire the fearful. Hold hands. Manage the bully, Celeste, affirm their beauty, confirm their talents, <laughs> celebrate their victories, reveal to them the secrets of the, bir <coughs> of the birds and the bees. <laughs> Create memories that will put a smile on their face long after you are not around. It doesn't matter what kind of dad you are. What matters is what kind of dad they remember you were. Impact their lives. Write a story on their hearts. You'll be proud for them to share throughout history, from generation to generation. A priceless responsibility. A true legacy. Be a daddy. Be a dad. Dad it. <laughs>